Hello comrades! For quite many people love appears to be the main motivator to study Russian. As I learned from speaking to real people, while younger students might generally have wide-ranging reasons to study Russian, the most popular motive for adults would be meeting a Russian-speaking woman or man whom they often plan to marry. In this video, I am going to prepare you for one of the aspects of marriage, which is relationships with the new relatives-in-law. See, alongside with acquisition of a spouse, you also get a handful of new relatives from the side of a partner. Often they are Russian native speakers too. Like your new precious mother-in-law, for example. While in English they simply use the word mother and add in-law to it, and for other family members by marriage they add in-law too, like father-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law. In Russian we do it very differently. We all love the Russian language because things are not that simple here, right? Therefore, in Russian, of course, we cannot expect the usage of some analogy to the in-law. Come on, that would be too easy. Therefore, in Russian, we have reserved words for each of the new relatives from the side of your spouse. Moreover, for a husband and a wife, those words would differ. Let's dive into the peripetia of relationships with family members and learn how to call your new relatives after marriage. At this point, I must warn you that it's difficult to figure this out without a bottle of vodka, therefore, I've prepared for you an image as a replacement for this noble drink. Okay, on the screen you can gaze upon the closest of your kin. While in the center you can see yourself, the bride and the groom, who will soon become husband and wife, Congratulations, by the way, to the right there is the bride's family and to the left the groom's family. As you see, I've divided them with a line, so there would be less confusion. By the way, after watching this video, you can download this PDF. The link is in the description. Okay, let's get to Russian. Groom in Russian is called жених, while the bride is невеста. Жених, невеста. After the wedding, which is свадьба, they become муж и жена. Муж, жена. Окей. Okay. Жених и невеста. Муж и жена. For all the wife's close relatives, the husband would become зять. Зять. While for all the husband's close relatives, the wife would become невестка. Невестка. However, so things would be more complicated and therefore interesting, in Russian we also have the word snaha. We have this word because the wife is невестка to everybody, but not the father of the husband, because for the father she is snaha. Snaha. So for the relatives, those two are зять и невестка или снаха. Okay, quick repetition. Жених – невеста, муж – жена, зять – невестка, снаха. Now let's learn how to call your new family members by marriage. The words that denote relatives-in-law would be different for a husband and a wife. Let's take parents-in-law first, precisely these four good people. For a husband, the newly acquired beloved mother-in-law would be тёща, and father-in-law would be тесть. Тёща, тесть. For a wife, the much-loved mother-in-law would be свекровь, and father-in-law would be свёкр. Свекровь, свёкр. These words would be the main because the relationships with parents-in-law are obviously the most important. For example, Friedrich Engels, one of the fathers of Marxism and therefore communism, loved his mother-in-law so much that after his wife passed away, he married his wife's younger sister, who was his svayachinitsa. Speaking of which, Let's learn how to call brothers and sisters-in-law. Those are brothers and sisters of your spouse, which in turn might have their own spouses too. For a husband, wife's sister would be svayachinitsa, and wife's brother – shurin. Svayachinitsa – shurin. 
that are her siblings. Those in turn can have their own spouses that would not be blood relatives. So for husband, those would be svayak nevestka. Svayak nevestka. For wife, husband's sister would be zalovka and brother would be devir. Zalovka devir. Those are his siblings. Those in turn can have their own spouses who would be Zyat and Nivestka. So repetition Svayachinitsa Svayak Shurin Nivestka Zalovka Devir Zyat Nivestka. Now let's study additional vocabulary because one or both of the spouses might have their own pasts in terms of exes and children from previous relationships. Ex-wife in Russian is called бывшая жена. The ex-husband is called бывший муж. бывшая жена, бывший муж. If those were not married, we remove the word муж or жена and just say бывшая, бывший, бывшая. Бывший. Also, one of the spouses can have kids from the previous marriage. The daughter would be Пачерица and son would be Пасанак, while you will be either Очим or Мачиха. Очим is a word for a stepfather, Мачиха is a word for a stepmother. Of course, отчим would be a more common word among children because after divorce, kids usually stay with their mother. So, repetition. Пачерица, пасанок, мачеха, отчим. Okay, that's it for this video. Since it's impossible to remember all this stuff at one go, I've prepared for you a PDF with this image you see on the screen. The link is in the description. I wish you a happy family life. Любите своих родственников, особенно тещу и свекровь. Увидимся в следующем видео. Пока.